What's good, guys? Today is Saturday, November the 5th, 2022. Just remembering my grandfather today on his birthday, gone but not forgotten. This video, of course, will be regarding the Kanika Jenkins case. And specifically, this is going to be a video for, it will be a series of videos for anyone who's interested in the initial court filing and what was contained in that paperwork. Oddly enough, I went back to look and I have never done a video regarding the initial court filing. So I wanted to go ahead and do that, and that way I'll have that in the playlist, uh, the Kanika Jenkins related information playlist. And that way, if anyone has any questions, they can always go back and look at it. Now, it is probably going to be lengthy, um, and it will probably be a series of videos. So just bear with me while I get these videos out. And if you hear any racket in the background, the winds are 45 miles an hour today here in Kentucky. So that's probably what you'll be hearing. But regardless, I'm going to carry on. Okay, I want to start this off by saying I am not an attorney. I am not a paralegal, law clerk, none of that. I am not in the legal field at all. But my previous experience was in the legal field for many years. So... This is titled Complaint and Demand for Trial by Jury. And at the very top, it says 12 person jury. That is who they want to decide this case. This was filed on December the 11th of 2018 at 3.33 in the afternoon at the Circuit Court Clerk's Office in Cook County, Illinois. It's titled In the Circuit Court of Cook County, Illinois County Department Law Division. Teresa Martin as special administrator for the estate of Kanika Jenkins deceased plaintiff and I'll tell you that that shouldn't say administrator it should actually say administratrix because that is the feminine of the word administrator versus CPO Hospitality LLC doing business as Crown Plaza Chicago O'Hare Hotel whose registered agent is David M. Friedman F and F Realty LTD, whose registered agent again is David M. Friedman. Capital Security and Investigations, whose registered agent is Lester N. Arnold, and MBC Rosemont LLC, doing business as Murray Brothers Caddyshack, whose registered agent is the CT Corporation System. Those are all of the defendants in this case. The case number is 2018 for the year the case was filed. L for Law Division. 013273. Now I will try to break this down as we go along. That's why I say it's probably going to be a series of videos. Now comes plaintiff Teresa Martin as special administrator for the estate of Kanika Jenkins deceased by and through her counsel Beam Legal Team LLC and for her complaint against defendants CPO Hospitality LLC doing business as Crown Plaza Chicago O'Hare Hotel f and Realty LTD, Capital Security and Investigations, and NBC Rosemont LLC doing business as Murray Brothers Caddyshack hereby states as follows. Number one, at all times relevant, Teresa Martin was the biological mother of Kanika Jenkins. A petition to duly appoint Teresa Martin as administratrix of the estate of Kanika Jenkins has been filed and is currently pending in the probate court of Cook County, Illinois. That part's pretty easy, pretty self-explanatory. They're just saying that Teresa Martin, Miss Teresa Martin, excuse me, is the biological mother of Kanika Jenkins and that she has filed the necessary paperwork to be appointed as the administratrix over the estate of Kanika Jenkins, who is deceased. Number two, at all times relevant, plaintiff's decedent, Kanika Jenkins, was a resident of the city of Chicago, County of Cook, state of Illinois. Again, very simple stuff there. Number three, upon all information and belief, defendant CPO Hospitality LLC was an Illinois corporation doing business as Crown Plaza Chicago O'Hare Hotel in the city of Rosemont, County of Cook, state of Illinois. 
And I, I want you guys to take notice of that. The very first part of that wording. Upon all information and belief. So what they're saying in that one little phrase there is that from all of the information they've obtained and to their belief from the information they obtained. Okay. And, and that'll play a part down the road uh, as we get further into this complaint. Um, but right here, it's pretty self-explanatory. They were able to look on the Secretary of State's website, be able to pull up CPO Hospitality, and see that they were a Illinois corporation um, doing business as the Crown Plaza. Number four, upon all information and belief, defendant F and F Realty Ltd was an Illinois corporation doing business in the city of Rosemont County of Cook, state of Illinois. F and F Realty Ltd owned, operated, and managed the Crown Plaza Chicago O'Hare Hotel. Number five, upon all information and belief, defendant Capital Security and Investigations, here and after Capital Security was an Illinois corporation doing business in the city of Rosemont, County of Cook, State of Illinois. Capital Security provided security services to the Crown Plaza Chicago O'Hare Hotel. Um, what they're saying in this paragraph is that they're no longer going to call them Capital Security and Investigations because that's a mouthful and it's a lot to type. So from this point forward, they're only going to refer to them as Capital Security. They're also saying that Capital Security is the company that Crown Plaza Chicago O'Hare, uh, also f, f Realty, hired to provide security services for the hotel. Number six, upon all information and belief, defendant NBC Rosemont LLC was an Illinois corporation doing business as Murray Brothers Caddyshack Restaurant. Here and after, it should say actually, here and after referred to as Caddyshack Restaurant in the city of Rosemont, County of Cook, State of Illinois. Caddyshack Restaurant leased premises from defendant CPO Hospitality LLC doing business as Crown Plaza Chicago O'Hare Hotel and or f, f Realty LTD. Again, in this paragraph, they're just saying they're no longer going to call them Murray Brothers Caddyshack Restaurant. They're only going to refer to them as Caddyshack Restaurant, just to shorten it. And they're also saying that the Caddyshack Restaurant had leased the kitchen from CPO Hospitality, who was Crown Plaza Chicago O'Hare, who is F and F Realty, because they're all one and the same. All right. Number seven, defendant CPO Hospitality LLC doing business as Crown Plaza Chicago O'Hare Hotel and F and F Realty LTD are collectively referred to as Crown Plaza defendants. And like I just said. Because they are all one and the same, operated by the same person, they are going to refer to them simply as Crown Plaza. Number eight. This matter arises out of a September the 10th, 2017 incident resulting in the death of Kanika Jenkins that occurred at the Crown Plaza Chicago O'Hare Hotel, located at 5400 River Road in the city of Rosemont, County of Cook, State of Illinois. On or about September, sorry, number nine. On or about September the 9th, 2017, at approximately 1.13 a.m., plaintiff's decedent, Kanika Jenkins, entered the Crown Plaza Defendant's Hotel as a guest. So, let's back it up. Paragraph 8 says that this incident on September the 10th resulted in the death of Kanika Jenkins, and it occurred at their hotel. In paragraph 9, it's saying that on September the 9th, at approximately 1.13 a.m., Kanika Jenkins entered the Crown Plaza as a guest. Number 10. Plaintiff's decedent, Kanika Jenkins, entered the hotel completely coherent and without incident. And I want to just also tell you that the reason they're calling her plaintiff's decedent, Kanika Jenkins, is because she is a plaintiff in this party, but she is deceased. Um, and she is being represented by her mother. 
So that's the way to distinguish her from Miss Teresa by calling her the plaintiff's decedent, the one that has passed away. And they're just saying in that paragraph that she came in um, completely fine. Okay. Number 11. On or about September the 9th, 2017, at approximately 2.30 a.m., plaintiff's decedent, Kanika Jenkins, left a room on the ninth floor and was last seen by her friends at that time. Okay? So, the complaint states that approximately 2.30 a.m., Kanika left the room on the ninth floor and was last seen by her friends. Number 12, and it's very important to realize how these are worded. On information and belief, there's that paragraph again. Um, so from the information they obtained, the research they did, and the belief in that research. Prior to 2.30 a.m. on or about September the 9th, 2017, there were multiple notifications to the Crown Plaza defendants and or agents of defendant, capital security, regarding the room where decedent Kanika Jenkins was believed to be. All right. Simply stating that there was multiple calls um, or multiple notifications, I'll say it just like they did, that um, stuff was going on in room 926, and that's where Kanika Jenkins was believed to be. Number 13, there's that paragraph again, on, or that wording, on information and belief. Prior to 2.30 a.m., on or about September the 9th, 2017, the Crown Plaza defendants and or agents of defendant, capital security, had actual and or constructive knowledge that there were too many occupants in the room where decedent Kanika Jenkins was believed to be. A smoke detector had been disabled in the room where decedent Kanika Jenkins was believed to be, and or there was a smell of strong intoxicants emanating from the room where decedent Kanika Jenkins was believed to be. So, on the information they have received from the research they have done and the belief in both of those things, um, prior to 2.30 a.m., which is when they say Kanika left the room, They knew there was too, the hotel knew that there was too many occupants in the room. Let me back it up. The hotel and capital security knew that there were too many people in the room, that there was a smoke detector that had been disabled, and that there was a small, a strong smell of um, marijuana, and I'm not sure if they could smell alcohol. I don't remember that part, but... I know that they could smell the marijuana coming from that room. All right. Number 14. On information and belief prior to 2.30 a.m. on or about September the 9th, 2017, neither the Crown Plaza defendants and or agents of defendant capital security who had actual and or constructive knowledge of dangerous and or impermissible conduct of individuals in the room where decedent Kanika Jenkins was believed to be, intervened or appropriately investigated such conduct as was required under the circumstances then and there existing. So, from the information they have obtained, the research they did, and the belief in both of those things, they state that prior to 2.30 a.m. that the Crown Plaza and Capital Security knew that there were dangerous things going on in that room and that they went up there and intervened. All right. Number 15. On or about September the 9th, 2017, shortly after defendants knew and or had reason to know Kanika Jenkins was missing at or about 2.30 a.m., Miss Teresa Martin was assured by Crown Plaza defendants, hotel staff, and employees, and or agents of Capital Security, 
they would check and review all security cameras and footage to locate plaintiff's decedent, Kenika Jenkins. Now, it says in that paragraph that the defendants, the hotel and the security company, both assured Miss Teresa Martin that they were going to review all the security cameras and try to find Kanika. Number 16. On or about September the 9th, 2017, Crown Plaza defendants and defendant capital security undertook the responsibility of checking security cameras footage in order to locate plaintiff's decedent, Kanika Jenkins. So in that one, in that paragraph, they are saying that Crown Plaza and Capital Security both assumed responsibility of checking those security cameras to try to find Kanika. Number 17. After defendants were informed of plaintiff's decedent Kanika Jenkins' disappearance, employees of defendants failed to properly monitor and or review security video cameras and footage which would have shown the whereabouts of Kanika Jenkins, which would have saved her life. So, in that paragraph, they're saying that the employees didn't monitor the footage or review the footage adequately, which would have saved the life of Kanika Jenkins. 18. Plaintiff's decedent, Kanika Jenkins, was a guest at the Crown Plaza Defendant's Hotel. The broom may not have been in her name, but she was still a guest because she was invited there um, and that made her a guest. Number 19, Plaintiff's decedent, Kanika Jenkins, was last seen near an elevator on the ninth floor where surveillance cameras were installed, in use, and properly working, and therefore she was observable. Now this statement, uh, number 19, has been quite a controversial uh, part of this filing, but I want you guys to take notice, because it doesn't say, upon belief, upon information and belief, it says that she was last seen near an elevator on the ninth floor where there were cameras installed in use and properly working and therefore she was observable. It doesn't say she may have been observable or it doesn't say she could have been observable or she was failed to have been observed on the cameras. It states it plain as day. So I just want you guys to understand what that statement is saying. It's saying that there is, in fact, um, a surveillance camera installed outside of the ninth floor um, elevator bank that was in use and was properly working. So I don't know what information the attorneys for Miss Teresa Martin had at that point. But apparently they had something that made them state that. Okay. And I think the only way we're going to find out is when this lawsuit is over. Uh, what they really had. Now I'm, I'm just saying what it states in this complaint. And I'm just letting you guys know the wording because it does not state upon information and belief on that paragraph. It states it very matter of factly. And I know people have uh, shown videos to show that there's no um, video surveillance outside of this elevator and that elevator. I can't help that. I'm just telling you guys what the legal filing says, okay? Now, moving on to number 20. On or about September the 9th, 2017, at approximately 3.32 a.m., 
plaintiff's decedent, Kanika Jenkins, was seen on camera entering a kitchen through the employee door from the downstairs hallway of the Crown Plaza Chicago O'Hare Hotel. Pretty simple there. It says on the 9th at 3.32 a.m., Kanika Jenkins was on camera shown entering a kitchen through the employee door from the downstairs hallway of the hotel. Number 21. Between approximately 2.30 a.m. when plaintiff's decedent, Kanika Jenkins, was last seen by her friends and 3.32 a.m. when she was last seen on camera entering an abandoned kitchen, she appeared on Crown Plaza defendant surveillance footage at all times. <laughs> it doesn't say <laughs> upon information and belief it says that from 2.30 a.m. to 3.32 a.m. When she was last seen on camera entering that abandoned kitchen, she was on the surveillance footage at all times. So that would be, what, 58 minutes? Number 22, had Crown Plaza defendants, staff, and employees and or agents of defendant capital security checked the surveillance footage sooner or alternately, alternatively, properly, and timely reviewed the video footage, they would have seen plaintiff's succeeded Kenny Jenkins enter the kitchen and would have been able to locate her, which would have prevented her death. So, the attorneys are saying that if the hotel or their employees or the staff from Capital Security had went to that footage sooner and checked it, they would have seen her coming into that kitchen and would have been able to walk right to her and find her, which possibly could have prevented her death. Number 23, on or about September the 9th, 2017, between 2.30 a.m. when plaintiff's decedent Kanika Jenkins was last seen by her friends and 3.32 a.m. when she was last seen on surveillance footage entering the kitchen of the Crown Plaza Defendant's Hotel, she passed several hotel personnel who failed to prevent Kanika Jenkins from entering the kitchen. So again, they're saying between 2.30 and 3.32 a.m., 58 minutes, when she was last seen on the surveillance footage entering that kitchen, she had passed several hotel staff who did not stop her from entering that kitchen. And I think now is a good time to make mention of this as well. Now, this was filed... On December in December 2018 so a little over a year after this incident happened um, and in, in in that year I'm sure they had gathered many documents um, much video footage um, etc and so a lot of these things are puzzling to me only because um, some of this stuff is not what we've been led to believe from the footage and from the case file. So it kind of makes you scratch your head a little bit. And I think considering all the trouble I had with the last series of videos I had and length of my videos, I'm going to cut this video here and just pick right back up. Um in the next video and continue on and we'll just like I said do this as a series because I don't want to have to I fooled with that video for over two weeks maybe longer than that and it was incredibly frustrating but I learned so much and I did not quit and um and I'm thankful for the experience so I'm going to end the video on that note and I'll see you guys in the next video 
Thanks for watching.